Ryan's tucking the end and we're all set. Now we have the belly bands on and uh, Ryan is starting at the stern and we're going to start and shrink from the perimeter band and we're going to pick a section on the boat and the section is right to the uh, top of the uh, cockpit area. And what we're going to do is shrink from the base. You always want to shrink from the bottom. Let the heat work for you. So Ryan is starting at the bottom and he's going to shrink up and to the uh, top of the uh, combing on the boat. And what that is going to do is start pulling the excess plastic out of the top. You can see it shrinks very quickly. And especially because we're starting at the bottom and letting the heat rise. Now he's going to stop right here and before he gets to the top. And we're going to go around the entire boat up that far so it's going to pull out excess. And we'll start to tighten the boat very nicely and we won't have to shrink the top as much. And you want to always wear your glove again at the same time because you'll be padding the seams and uh, making sure that everything is holding together nicely as you go around the boat. See Ryan is hitting the film nicely. It's very similar to spray painting where you're applying heat in the same kind of fashion. You get the material to start shrinking and where it's not shrunk you'll see wrinkles form so it gives you a clue as to what you've hit and what you've missed. And same thing around the bow. Now uh, we'll do this around the entire boat and then come back and we'll put an extension on the heat tool and shrink the top. And we'll do that in sections and, uh, and the same principles on uh, use, shrinking this boat will work on larger boats also. Ryan has went all the way around the boat up uh, to the uh, edge of the uh, combing and so on and now we can do the top. And you can see the center support strap and where we've also put in the wooden uprights. And you want to actually shrink it section by section if you have the opportunity. And uh, that's what Ryan is doing right now. So the shrink wrap will actually stop shrinking at the strapping uh, going down the center and, uh, and across the unit. Uh, the cover is all shrunk. Ryan is going back right now to uh, remove the uh, tape over the fuel vent so the so it can breathe through the uh, storage season. He ripped off the small piece of tape that uh, marked where the vent is. Now he's just cutting a small hole to, uh, to have access to the uh, fuel vent. Once he has that open, he can pull the tape off. And then we're going to put a vent over it so that it can breathe properly. And we're going to use one of our DS683 self-adhesive vents. So Ryan's peeling the backing off of the, uh, the vent so the adhesive is exposed, putting it over the hole, reaching inside to make sure that uh, there's good adhesion between the shrink wrap and the adhesive on the vent. And it's simply a matter of putting the cap on and now the vent can breathe during the storage season. One of the last steps after the cover is uh, actually shrunk is to install the door. And doors are put on uh, with tape around the perimeter. And they should be put in on a surface that uh, is not entirely flat. We want a little bit of slope so that uh, they don't have a, a, a lot of weight resting on them. The door should look like a great big U as you're facing it with the bottom of the U facing down towards the uh, uh, bottom of the boat where you're going to have access. Then simply uh, tape around the perimeter of the unit, press the tape down completely to eliminate any air bubbles or loose edges, and then uh, after, it, after it's taped we can cut out the center of the, uh, the door and have access.
And Ryan's using a film cutting knife, which works well for cutting the tape also in a nice, neat fashion. So you have a clean end, which will stick well. Doors do not have to be heated in, and uh, that you should not put heat onto the doors because it can deform them where they will not open and close. And again, rub the tape down good so that you have good adhesion. Now we can just unzip the door using the film knife, cut out the center, and you can have access. Once it's trimmed out, Ryan can just close the door, zip it shut, and your cover is secure again, but you still have access. Ryan is also taping the seams and pleats just so that they don't come open. Uh, occasionally, uh, there's not enough heat put in to make a good heat weld, so they uh, will come open after a few days of sitting, but a, a, a simple strip of tape will uh, keep them closed for the entire storage season. And the last step is to ventilate the cover. And we're going to use uh, more of the 683 vents. And we want enough vents in the cover to have cross-flow ventilation. So on a boat this size, this 19-foot boat, I would put in four vents. It never hurts to over-ventilate. You want to have as much airflow as possible to keep moisture down. And uh, so your boat will be uh, dry and fresh when you open it up again. And also the, uh, the vents travel down the road good, so if this boat is going to be, uh, or machine would be uh, transported, you can still use the same vents. And we have a completed cover. Thanks for following along with us today while we installed a uh, professional and durable shrink wrap cover. As you can see, it's fully ventilated. We have a support structure so you'll have no problem with snow, ice, rain sitting on the cover during the storage or transportation season or while you're using it. And uh, the final thing is, uh, what do you do with the cover when you take it off? Well, we have a recycling program that works coast to coast in the United States, also in Canada. It's called the rebag system, where you actually just cut the cover off above the perimeter band stuff it in a bag, UPS will pick it up at your location so it doesn't have to go into a landfill. This is a